into our next whole section after the uh, the fire uh, fire modding fire punk section of the uh, uh, civilized variations. So uh, that was pretty long. Those were pretty long sections, weren't they? Uh, but, you know, there was a lot of variations. And there's a lot more, I'm sure that's possible, that can be done. But that's all I'm going to be fitting in those sections. So uh, we'll be doing others in, uh, I think, other videos. So, but uh, from now on, in this section, we're going to be doing what's called fire hacking. And uh, so hacking is a big term nowadays, right? Uh, so you're hacking this, hacking that. So, so why not fire hacking, right? Well, because what we're doing is we're, with the fire dojo, we're bringing uh, friction fire, fire keeping into, uh, into this millennium. <laughs> so uh, there's many definitions for hacking or what hacking could be. But our definition here is going to be to be able to pull something off, okay? To gain access to something or, or something of that nature, but uh, to be able to pull something off. And uh, so if you could uh, remember way back uh, in the beginning of the video series, uh, I was talking about uh, the four balances or the, the role duties. So you had a uh, scout, you had a hunter-gatherer, had warrior, and you had healer as these life-supporting role duties. Um, so fire hacking falls under again, well, actually all of the all of the friction fire keeping uh, world universe in itself falls under hunter-gatherer, but everything that is life supporting always falls under scout first because to do any of the other duties uh, hunter gatherer warrior healer you have to do scout first you have to gather information and you have to decide how to what to do with that information so that always takes precedent first before you do uh, one of the other three or a combination thereof so, uh, fire hacking, again, we're doing uh, information gathering uh, on a life supportive level, okay, because that's really what it's about. And then we take that information and we figure out what we're, we're going to do with it. But it really falls under the scout world because it has to do with discoveries. Fire hacking has to do with discovery. And in that whole adventurous part of being a scout where uh, you, you're a detective or you're an explorer and uh, you're doing new and exciting things, especially things of discovery. In this case, we're doing discoveries of two things. Uh, if you remember back to, again, the uh, values, morals, and ethics part of the section in the beginning of the of the media we talked about how the value of life is a dual value of self and others it's a balance of both so the discovery part that we're doing here with fire hacking is in is two parts it's self and others so when I talk about self for example when we're fire hacking we are pulling something off so for example when in the early part of the media in the Handel section. I told you there's a, a number of Handel materials you can use. Uh, amaranth, burdock, evening primrose, yuccas, right? And then I show you that it can be done. So that's not necessarily a discovery that it, it uh, if it can be done, it can be done. But when it, in regards to self, have you done it? So if I say as your sensei, as your teacher, if I say you can do amaranth for a hand drill, um, but you haven't done it. So you need to discover for yourself the material. 
you need to gather the material, prepare the material, um, and then use the material. And then you, you know, you kind of check that off. And I'm famous for my to do check off list, so for myself. So you go, Amra did Amra. So you, you essentially fire hacked that for yourself. You, uh, I said it could be done, or you know, our our ancestors say that it could be done, and that gets passed down. But you have to do it yourself. So there's a discovery for yourself. Well, the other part is is very important too, and this is where you really take friction fire keeping to a whole new level, and that is where you discover things for humanity, for humanity as a whole. So what hasn't been done that you can do to better that world, that universe. So in regards to friction fire keeping, for example, uh, it's never been done before that ebony has been done with a friction fire device uh, method and now it's been done. So not only have I made a discovery for myself, you, I've made a discovery for humanity, okay? And then we go farther. I, I want to push things farther. So we go, uh, can we do lignum vitae, which is an even harder density on the Jonka level? And yes, it can be done. So I've made another discovery for humanity. Well, let's go even farther and let's do, as far as we know, the hardest wood in the world. Let's do bull oak from Australia which has a Jonka level of over 5,000. And uh, can it be done? Yes, yes it could be done. So, and now uh, on that scout level and um, adding to the world of the hunter-gatherer, friction fire keeping, um, as a discovery for all of humanity, it is possible to do the hardest wood in the world um, with a friction fire device if you can balance all the variables. So uh, fire hacking could also be uh, with fire modding uh, on that fire punk kind of culture. So if you can play with the variables and do something new, that's great. But uh, in regards to really fire hacking, as this section is concerned, we're gonna do traditional methods. We're gonna do primal basics and uh, mostly hand drill. And we're gonna do uh, materials that I've never done before. And we're gonna do materials that may have never been done before. I don't know of anybody else doing them, but here they are. They're gonna be on video and they're gonna be discoveries for both self and others. So it's gonna be out there that it can be done. For example, um, there's a really annoying plant called uh, beggar's, beggar's Lice, uh, which is Hackelia virginiana, and which grows in my backyard. And I looked at it and I go, I wonder if that could be done. Well, the, the annoying part of the plant is that the seeds stick to your clothes and it's, it's really annoying. And uh, so I, uh, uh, identified it, first of all, identified it properly, gathered it, prepared it, and uh, pulled it off. I hacked, hacked that material, fire hacked that material. So now we have a discovery for both self and human. So those are the things that we're going to be doing. But first, I want to clarify that, um, and I apologize for this right off the bat, uh, I'm realizing that in the beginning of the hand drill section, uh, I said that there were materials that could be done, and I did demonstrate some, but I didn't demonstrate them all. So the first part of this fire hacking section, I'm going to finish demonstrating the ones that uh, I said could be done, but did not do, because I don't think that's right, and I don't think that's really fair. So uh, I want to remedy that now. So the first thing we're gonna list is uh, amaranth, burdock, dogbane, evening primrose, thistle, velvet leaf, yucca, mugwort, reeds, cockleburr, and horseweed, all of which I mentioned in the, uh, 
in the first part of the handrail, maybe maltrail section, but did not show. So I'm going to do those first to prove, as a discovery to self and humanity, that they can be done, that they are hacked. Because in the, in the beginning, since I don't show it, technically it's not really uh, proof. And we're in this series, it's all about science. It's about what you can prove, what you really can do. And uh, because the, everything here is evidence-based. Um, and really, I've learned that from uh, not just martial arts, but from healthcare. Healthcare, the entire universe of healthcare, is based on evidence of what works. So, uh, healthcare is very sci science based because it's a life supporting um, vocation, right? The healer. So, and here we're adding that to all of the life supporting. Um, roles and duties, right? Profiler, uh, provider, protector, preserver, right? As I mentioned earlier. So, and then after that, I'm gonna, I have a pretty huge list of things to be hacked that we'll go over. And, uh, and uh, it's very exciting. So, things that um, I've never done and a lot of things that people have never seen so both discovery for both self and others. All right, so I'm very excited to do this section as I have to do all the other sections. All right, so, and as you can see, I've been pretty busy. My fire dojo is a complete mess. I gotta clean that up and, and let's get going. Okay, all right, let's fire hack those materials, let's go. Okay, and welcome to our next section. And today we're doing amaranth hand drills. Okay, so this one's already stripped down, the bark is off. As you can see, it's as I spin it, it's a little crooked, especially down here. Okay. And it is 19 inches long. I have a base reload of Western Red Cedar. As you can see, there's nothing in the notch. It's mated. I'm going to put some jute. In the notch. As filler. And I'm going to hold that down with a little... Buckskin, I think. It's a little loose. There we go. Some scraps of buckskin. Alright, let's get this warmed up, shall we? Amaranth is very similar to lamb's quarters, I find. <laughs> that was fast. There you have it, amaranth. Amaranth flower, amaranth leaves for a salad, and handrail as well. Awesome plant. Be right back. All right, welcome to our next section. 
today we're doing burdock and these are burdock branches this isn't even a stalk as uh, as you see from the uh, the pictures of the giant burdock that I collected these are just branches that came off that that stalk So here's one, 18 inches, and it's got a pretty good curve in it. As I spin it, you can see. So I'm going to be uh, doing a lot of floating <laughs> near the middle. Here's our Western Red Cedar, base reload. Nothing's in the notch. It's mated with some jute in the notch. Let's get started, shall we? warmed up. This stalk is really thin. It's uh, it's less than three-eighths of an inch. Try not to let this cool down. And there's our coal. Already. I think uh, one of the reasons why that was so quick is because it's a really thin diameter and had a lot of rotation on it, so it spins faster. wonderful plants and does fire saw as well as well as bow drill and uh, you could use reloads for uh, pump drill as well all right let's keep going okay welcome to our next one and we're doing some dog bane as you can see, these specimens were collected in 2011. We're going to be using this shorter, thinner one. This one is 13 and a half inches long. And its diameter at the base is... is just over a quarter inch. Whoops. So as you can see I took all the bark off the base end. Quarter, uh, dogbane as you know is one of the, the best cordage plants around and uh, if you don't strip all the fiber off there it's gonna sweep and brush away all your your coal pile and you don't want that. Our uh, base today is a very small section of Atlantic white cedar and we're going to be using this small one here. I just mated it together a little bit. It's got a little notch in there. As you can see there's nothing in the notch. We're not going to put anything in the notch because it's very, uh, it's not tall. So the space will fill very quickly with dust. <coughs> okay. Actually, uh, this one's so short, I'll stay right here. So let's get this warmed up. Getting some good smoke. Getting a little bit of dust. Some nice dark dust. So let's light that up. All right, let's have a look. And 
there's our coal. go. Dog being awesome. Let's keep going, shall we? All right, welcome to our next section. And right now we're doing evening primrose. These are some nice 18-inch long stalks. Uh, this particular evening primrose spindle is a little shorter than the rest. This one is just under a foot, as you can see. So here I have a western red cedar base reload. I'm reusing this one. But here is a new one. It's mated has a notch in it, there's nothing in it. And we're putting some jute in the notch to take up the space. Now I've taken uh, a good portion of the bark off the base end because as you know, um, Evening Primrose is rather fibrous. It's not good enough for cordage fibrous, but it's uh, fibrous enough to really destroy your coal making efforts in the notch if you're not careful because it'll just literally brush and sweep everything away if you're not careful. So we're going to be doing a bit of floating here. Get this going. Let's get that notch filled. Evening primrose, great plant. Give me a second. Keep going.
Hey, welcome to our next section. And today we're doing thistles. These are some various thistles I've collected. Okay. Today we'll be using this one. It's 18 inches long. It's just a hair over 3 eighths of an inch. It's probably 10 millimeters at the base. As you can see, I cleaned up all the bark around the base end. Our western red cedar base reload. Nothing in the notch. It's made it together. We're putting some jute in the notch to take up some space. warmed up. Got some really good friction. Got a dust pile going. Got some good smoke. We gotta fill that notch a little bit more. Thistles. <laughs> Very nice. Let's keep going. And welcome to our next section. And today we're doing velvet leaf. Here I have some really great specimens. All of these are over 18 inches. They're close to 24. So I've chosen one. This one is 18 inches long. It's a 3 8 inch diameter. As you know, it's a cordage plant, so I've definitely taken off the bark near the bottom so that fibers don't destroy the coal making process. We're doing Western Red Cedar. Again, base reload, nothing's in the notch. It's made it together. I'm holding that in with a little buckskin. Putting a little jute in the notch just to raise up the space and we're ready to go. Here up top I left the bark on and uh, it's, uh, it is velvety so it's taking it easy on my hands a little bit. nice and warmed up now. So I'm just going to float here a little bit up top. Gonna go down and I think we have our coal already. This velvet leaf is great, great stuff. All right. Let's keep going. All 
Alright, and welcome to our next section. And we're doing a 18 inch. It's actually more than 18 inches. Uh, 19 inch. Um, yucca. This one is 3 eighths of an inch in diameter. It is a whole spindle of yucca. We're doing a base reload of Western Red Cedar. You can see there's nothing in the notch. We're going to put a little bit of jute in the notch to take up space. It's already mated. So we're just going to get this warmed up and get it going. I imagine this is going to be fairly quick, so I'll just go for it. And I think we got it. Yoka is amazing. There we go. Yucca. Hand drill. Alright, let's keep going. Okay, and welcome to our next section. And uh, if you remember my story from way back in the beginning about the mugwort and my friend in Germany telling me that mugwort really, really needs to be uh, it needs to disintegrate a little bit in the weather <clears throat> in order for it to be able to be used for a hand drill uh, so that it will lower its density. <clears throat> well, these ones that I've selected have also been not weathered. <laughs> uh, so they're still fairly dense. And uh, so what we're going to be doing today is, uh, since these are beautifully nice and straight when I collected them, uh, we're going to be doing a mouth drill, okay? So uh, the diameter of this one at the base is exactly three eighths of an inch, which, as you can see, has been cleaned up. And you really want to clean up the mugwort because that stuff will really uh, the bark will come off and kick everything around. Now, again, when I'm scraping, I'm making sure that the end is completely round so that there's no sidewall friction. So I rounded off and greased the brace end already. So this is 18 inches. Pine base reload. We're not gonna put anything in the notch. We're just gonna let it fill on its own this time around. So, oak, uh, pressure mouth brace. Back that up a little bit.
Hmm? Almost. Hmm? Stopped a little short. And there we go, mugwort, mouth drill. That wasn't completely straight because it was like kissing a jackhammer, which is not fun for your brain knocking around your skull. What's great about mugwort is that it's so abundant. I mean, once it starts growing along places like sides of highways and stuff, it just takes over, so uh, it's very hard not to come across mugwort. It's just everywhere, at least here on the East Coast, especially in Germany. All right, all right, let's keep going. Okay, so I'm gonna make this really quick because it's like 20 degrees out here and it's February. Here we are on the edge of a cornfield. Far clear that lens. We're on the edge of a cornfield and here is some mugwort growing here. But I say we have two different kinds. We have what I call brown, which is standing mugwort, next to gray mugwort, which is uh, fallen and starting to decay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is collect some of these and show you some of the difference back at the fire dojo. Okay, be right back. Okay, so we're back at the fire dojo and we're looking at two samples of of mugwort. Now over here I have some really tall ones here and they are uh, what I call the gray. So these ones were somewhat broken, laying uh, on the ground, not flat on the ground where they're absorbing water but they're off the ground, but they're not still connected to the uh, their roots and uh, standing straight. So these ones here I call brown ones, and if you notice, they have much more seed heads uh, still on them, and their color is a little darker. But what we want to do is investigate the difference between these two because uh, the gray ones, the ones which have been weathered a little bit more, uh, this is really the difference between doing a hand drill and having to use mugwort for every other kind of method, mouth drill on up. Okay. Let me get set here. So let's do the brown first. And the brown, as you can see, has seed heads still on it. This was cut because it was still standing in the ground. So if we take this and we break it, it's still. Uh, wants to connect together you can see that but if we take the gray which has little or no seed heads on it and as you can see it is a different color if we put these side by side here's the brown here's the gray and if we snap this it snaps clean. Okay. So let's snap the brown again. And let's snap the gray. You don't just see a difference, you can hear a difference. So the gray, having been weathered enough, is good enough for hand drill. And what we're doing is we're coming around full circle. When I started talking about hand drill, I told the story of the mugwort, how 
my friend from Germany told me, yeah, it needs to be weathered in order for you to do a hand drill because I was never able to get a hand drill because I was always collecting brown mugwort in which the density was too much for me to do a hand drill or at least for my, my size, my constitution. So following his advice, I'm collecting what I call gray mugwort. Um, so these terms are my own, brown and gray. Uh, this one we're going to try here today is 18 inches. It's just a hair over a quarter inch in diameter at the bottom. As you can see, I took the bark off. Mugwort has a little fibrous bark. It's enough to ruin things if you don't take it off. We're going to use this very small section of western red cedar to do our coal today. Now, mugwort come in... in in larger diameters. They'll come in three eighths, half inch. Today we just happen to be doing just over a quarter inch. So what's expected today is that I'll get a lot of good rotation on this because it is a thinner diameter. As you can see there's nothing in the notch. It was made, by the way, for us to mention that. Did a lot of good spin on that. You can see the smoke piling out. Let's take advantage of its thin diameter. Get some good rotation. We got a coal already. Nope, almost, sorry. I saw smoke coming out of it. Just pop. Much better. <laughs> Sorry about that false start there. All right. So I talked about mug mugwort as a hand drill. Well, there it is. There's the proof. All right, let's keep going. All right, welcome to our next section. And today we're talking about reeds. Now back when, uh, at the end of the hand drill section, when I was going through uh, all those plant stalks, Near the end, I talked about how you can't do reeds as a hand drill. Well, uh, basically, you you can't do that if the reeds are really uh, too far gone, for one. But it's possible to do it as a uh, hand drill if you use it as a spindle reload. Okay. Now, first of all there's uh, a time to collect reeds. Now this one here, this long one, if you notice, uh, is fairly clean and smooth. I know it's kind of hard to tell on video, but uh, you'll see there's no wear on it. That's because this was cut green 
and put away. So the best way to collect reeds is just before they're going to die and before they start deteriorating. Cut them and then put them away. If you wait too long, like these ones here, okay, and you collect them, you can see that they've started to deteriorate. You can see the brown spots on them, almost like how a banana starts to go. So here at the bottom one, we have one that was cut green, put away. The top two were collected later, after they'd been sitting out in the weather. Now, you'll find that the one that's cut green, put away, is a little stronger than, than these ones that have been sitting out. They're much more fragile. As you can see, this just falls apart. There's no way it would be able to stand up to a uh, the forces of um, either a bow drill or hand drill or even mouth drill. So, but uh, the reed um, you have to be very careful with. Get the largest diameter you possibly can. Um, an example on this one is half an inch. Okay, and the walls are always very thin, but try to find the thickest walls that you possibly can. Okay. So the time you collect, like with some plants, is very important. So in a way, this is like the opposite of the mugwort. You don't want it to deteriorate. Um, you want to collect it early so that it's harder and stronger. With the mugwort, it's the other way around. You want to collect it when it's deteriorated and its density is less. We want one that has more density and more strength in the reed because it's already very fragile. So what, the first one we're going to do, um, because uh, I tried doing the bow drill with it, and uh, you'll notice that I kept getting uh, a take ori with the bow drill, right? Take ori, remember that? So it wouldn't go. So uh, you'll notice in the pictures that I did with the bow drill, there's one that has a uh, spindle reload, and that's what we're going to do again. But I want, I don't have video of it then, so I want you to see that it can be done now. Okay, so we're ready to give it a shot. Here's our spindle. Um, the diameter of this reed is half an inch. And uh, so, actually I wouldn't recommend anything smaller than that if possible um, because you want a lot of rotation. So you don't have much surface area to begin with. The walls are thin. This is the thickest wall that you can pretty much get. So our base today is sotal. It's a section of sotal. Notice the notch. It's fairly shallow. It just goes inside the ring. What I notice about reed is that it likes to scatter its dust. So I want to control the space of all the dust collection. So I've made the notch kind of small. Um, so let's anchor that down with the C-clamp. So we're going to use a bamboo bow. Brand new cord actually too. Um, when you cord your spindle, keep the cord near the top. And the reason for that is it's the weakest down here. Keep the unilateral forces away from the bottom. Not even in the middle. Keep it as far uh, away from the bottom as you can. So as close to the pressure hand brace as you can. And today we're using the ebony. So I'm not going to use so much pressure as I am speed and uh, rotation. I'm going to put just uh, just a little bit of jute in there, just to take up a little bit of the space.
technical difficulties. Please stand by. Okay. It doesn't want to go in there. Okay. Right. Start off easy. Not too much unilateral pressure, of course, because you don't want to break this. And you notice I'm not bowing into the notch. I'm going perpendicular to the notch. Nice and warmed up. And we have our coal. And just in time, too, it started to, to really go. Okay, I'm going to lift the whole thing out. And there is our reed bojo. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so picking up right where we left off, here is our reed hand drill. Again, bamboo chopstick spindle, a whole chopstick. Our spindle reload is half an inch in diameter. It's the thickest wall I could find. Okay. All right, again, we're doing male reloading spindle into female spindle reload held with a hose clamp. Now this is the same exact notch and base and socket that I used on the bow drill. You can see the notch is empty now. And if you look inside you can see the burn marks from the coal. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to reuse this right away. All right, it's not mated, so what we're going to do is, uh, since it automatically fits, we're just going to warm it up and go for it. Okay. So clamp that down. Actually, let's. Uh, Most of it? Yeah, that was. Right. I have nothing in the notch, not even a uh, some juice. So let's get this warmed up. Get a lot of speed going. That's a good dust pile going already. And we got our coal. Look at that. Reed hand drill as a spindle reload. Take that off for you there. Hold on. There we go. And there's a reed 
hand drill. All right, very nice. Let's keep going. Okay, so what you're looking at is uh, a bucket full of cockle burr. And uh, this is only some of what I've collected this year. I have uh, others in the shed. And uh, so I'm going to cut these down, uh, go through them, see what's good, see what's not, burn, uh, burn the waste. And. Uh, in my uh, wood stove and uh, we're gonna do a cockleburr hand drill I know way way back uh, I think I did a cockleburr um, mouth drill probably but I didn't do a hand drill so we're just gonna do a, a cockleburr hand drill alright so uh, let me clean these up get my set together and we'll be right back okay so I've gone through the selection process I've cut all the spindles down to just over 18 inches and again like I said I have I have more in the shed but I'm going through these right now so I've selected one one cockle burr and it's this one so uh, as you can see I've taken the bark off the very end and uh, rounded the top a little bit so it doesn't cut into my hands it's about 18 inches um, I've already gotten a fire out of this one. I was just practicing, but we're going to do another. So I have a pine uh, base reload there. I have just a little jute tinder just to fill the space right there. You can see nothing else is in the notch. And we're going to light this up again, I should say, since I just lit it up before. But this time you're going to see it though. So we got to get this warmed up. Smoking already. But I'm just taking my time, making some dust. I'll increase speed a little bit. Cockleburr hand drill. Just as a recommendation, uh, the cockleburr that I found, um, I found on the edge of a cornfield and they were all growing very tightly together but if you find cockleburrs that grow separately they're gonna branch out you're gonna find these ones that branch out if it has a lot of space so you gotta find cockleburr that's growing um, very tightly together and they all grow straight up and down so with with no branching so that's gonna be your best handle spindle 
Alrighty, so let's move on to something else. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, for our next section, we're going to be doing some horseweed. Horseweed uh, looks very similar to goldenrod. Although um, the flower stalks, the horseweed is somewhat whitish and the golden rods are yellow. But they look rather similar if you're, uh, and the tops, the shape of it is very distinctive once you can identify it. So we're going to use this spindle here of horseweed, this one here. This one is 15 inches long. As you can see, I took all the bark off around the base end and so we're going to be reusing this base reload here it's western red cedar we're going to be doing this new one here as you can see it's made it together down here we got a notch in there we're going to put some jute in there fill the space Horseweed is one of my favorites. It's one of the most abundant in my area. There's always plenty of it around. It's usually nice and straight. It's usually uh, just the right diameter for me. This is 3 eighths of an inch. So we're getting this nice and warmed up. Looks like the dust is the right color. We have our coal. It's quick and easy. Very nice. Let's keep going. 